Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In 1972, a group of 100 scientists, economists, business leaders, and former politicians who named themselves Club of Rome published The Limits of Growth, a manifesto questioning our development model in light of our limited Earth resources. Where do we stand 50 years later? Definitely, there has been a mobilization of the international community with uh, summits in Rio, Kyoto, and a major step uh, in Paris COP21, where 196 countries collectively agreed to limit global warming by 1.5 Celsius degrees and setting a, a clear direction on that. Of course, following COPs made uh, additional progress and the recently closed COP27 held in Egypt agreed on the principle of a compensation fund for loss and damages from climate-induced disasters. And this came after an adaptation fund and alignments on uh, taxonomy, reporting rules, etc. This climbing warming limit goal translates into a need to drastically curb carbon emissions by the middle of the century. And at this point, some would say that failing national uh, commitments to make it happen, the net zero by 2050 remains aspirational. As a matter of fact, adapting to climate change comes with a cost. Transitioning to cleaner energy, and we've seen that with solar panels or batteries, requires massive resources, minerals and metals that are pretty scarce on Earth. There is uh, more and more the uh, perceived perception that a change in paradigm is needed when it comes to the use of natural resources. As we speak, COP15 on diversity is ongoing in Montreal with a view to sanctuarize 30% of Earth uh, on la and land and sea by 2030. On the positive side, uh, we need to acknowledge that uh, we are witnessing innovation at a pace that is historically high <coughs> across all domains. <coughs> this is thanks to new technologies, but also with available new resources coming in particular from the venture capital and private equity industry that has turned startups into a new source of innovation, not only in the digital space, but also in more capital intensive areas like deep tech and clean tech. The good news also is that corporate world is now embracing the sustainability imperative, not only from a reporting and compliance standpoint, but as a lever to rethink the entire value chain from industrial production, operations, and business models to supply chain, of course, with technology as an enabler. Hence, the question today is not if, but how. How can we scale fast, promising technologies today in their infancy? Carbon capture technology, synthetic fuels as an example. How fast can we move transition to clean energy, wind, solar, and especially hydrogen? How can we do more with less, less leakages, less waste? And how can circular economy contribute to decarbonization and energy transition? To debate on these issues, it is my pleasure to welcome here on stage a panel that um, we are going to take a look at. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, which is a mixed panel. And we have uh, one of our members, Bruno, who is normally in visio.